I saw my first spinning flow arts performance at a music festival called Shambhala. You may have heard of it. <laughs> After seeing that first show, I just had to know how to do it. It wasn't even a question. <laughs> The first time I ever saw someone else hooping, it just looked like the most beautiful dance. And it's kind of something that we call flow. So to see someone in flow is kind of like in a meditation. Just the way that she was with her hoop just made me want to pick it up. And then as soon as I did, I just, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I just love that connection to like a, a raw element as fire. For me, it's a similar feeling of like, jumping into a body of water and the feeling of just being immersed. I was in high school, I was a young kid, and I was like, wait, I can do something cool that people will give me free beer for? So, sign me up. And that was the beginning of Fire Spring. history of poi was actually um, originated in New Zealand by the Maori people and it was a tool for them to practice their uh, their coordination with their weapons of war. Women also used it to practice their weaving techniques. Um, it's also heavily uh, integrated in the Hawaiian culture as well. It was always used as a storytelling and performance prop in that sense. Then you have staff spinning that's more of a martial arts tool, so from more of the Asian cultures, for example. There's props from all over the world, which is really cool. And there's props that have been invented in the last 10 years, I think, like the Dragon Staff or the, the S Staff Bougain. So they're still coming out and, and uh, you know, new things are happening all the time. Fire always brings people together, whether it's a campfire or or, uh, you know, a candle on your table or, you know, that light and that warmth always bring people together. And so it doesn't matter where you're from or whether you speak the same language. It seems like we are a family just because we have this similar interest. So it's really amazing because it's like you have all these friends and you don't even know it. But once you get together and you share this art form together, it it's like you're your best friends. There's been a huge development of community and evolution of fire spinning over the last 20 years. Um, from like a weave and a behind the back spin being the most amazing thing to, you know, a fully developed language and people who have math formulas to describe all the possible poi moves and then they try them. So it's developed really far and it's gone from, I think, something that was more of a fringe thing to having a really well-developed community and a future. Poi was my first prop. I used tennis balls and shoelaces. Those were my poi. <laughs> it was quite funny because I didn't have swivels on the poi, which is like a ball bearing that makes it not wind up and get tight like a rubber band. So as I spun these for a long time, I was actually cutting off the circulation on my fingers and they would go purple and I'd have to unwind them. I ruined every one of my mother's brooms to make a staff and learn to spin it when I was a kid. Um, we had this like fort that we made and we made like every ninja weapon possible. So pretty much if you could spin it or twirl it or pretend to attack somebody with it, I already tried to do so. The difference was lighting those things on fire. Once you start doing it, it's, it's the coolest thing ever. You get to hear the fire and see the fire right next to you and it's in, like an instant addiction. It's, mm. it's so much fun, you know? It's the sound, like the sound of, of that fire burning. And then as soon as you start spinning something, it's that, the sound and the wind and that rush. It just like, I don't know, it just like feeds your soul. And then of course, everyone just likes to see it. It's great to do something that puts a smile on people's faces. When I first lit uh, the staff in front of people, that was in the campground, and I was with uh, drummers, and uh, we had about 300 people all in a circle around. So I wasn't the most technical and the best at it, but I 
did let go and it was freaking awesome like there was there was no time there was just the moment and looking at everyone just looking at the fire and going and it was just like something very special that i will always remember yeah i aspire to be a full-time performer at some point in my life that's you know as of right now no i i also uh, work at a print shop and i also make leather work <laughs> actually i'm a cheese ambassador for canadian cheese that's what i do for a living and uh i also dj so i have a dj business and play music for the fun of people dancing i am a quality control manager at an engineered wood products manufacturing uh, plant my profession is i'm a registered massage therapist so i get to work people's issues out of their tissues <laughs> I'm a fluvial geomorphologist. So I do a lot of river restoration and um, a lot of different environmental projects. To me, it's my escape from work. I really enjoy doing it lots, and I'd say I put in enough hours to make it be a job. But whenever I start to feel like it's stressful, I kind of like to take a step back because I don't know, I, this is my leisure time. It's what I do for fun, and I always want it to feel that way. I really love that. Every time we light the flame, there's always this rush, this adrenaline that's pumping through your system. And you hear the flames whirling around you and you see the light. It's so mesmerizing and just really beautiful. And you kind of have to stop and totally embrace the moment. So it kind of like slows everything down. And I think it's really, like, really special. What I like the most about fire spinning is, uh, I guess, the, the geometric aspect of it. Uh, I like the, the, the balance uh, involved and it, it's, it's all like geometric movements. To clear my mind, I will go out in the street and start dancing. I remember like people driving by in Quebec City, for example, and I'm just dancing out in the street. And now when you add the element of life and element of fire, you just bring that energy and that let go and that full on being like rise up to a whole new level where your heart gets on fire. And then you can notice how it changes even people's behavior and it just brings people together. And all of this for me, it's that's what it's that's what it's about. I love that. It makes me feel like I can do anything. When I see someone doing something so difficult and so hard and I learn it and I can do it and I can show it off, it just makes me feel like I can do anything else. It makes me feel really powerful. Before fire spinning, I really didn't have too much of an artistic side. I've always been in sports, I've always been into science, 
and uh, fire spinning really opened up that creativity for me. I actually just really like putting in some headphones and hanging out at the park and spinning some props and I don't know, just time alone, ignoring the world, doing something that I think is fun. So that would probably be my favorite part. Um, how that translates to fire is that I, I don't know, get to look cool and be dangerous. My creative process can come from a few different uh, starting points. Um, a lot of times it comes from music and I, I picture what's happening to a song. Um, I get a lot of like visual action in my head when I listen to music and I think just over the years that's just how I how I relate to a lot of music. My inspiration comes a lot from Kinshira, my family of Kinshira. When I see some when I see them doing something it inspires me to want to be better and do more. As well we like to go to flow festivals. So flow festivals are a community place like a like a summer camp for adults. So you can go and learn from people that are really great at it, teaching workshops of all different kinds. It's kind of like a circus festival. I mean, it's kind of limitless in what you can progress to because there's so many other things that you can try. And each, once you learn something with one prop, you can it transfers over to another mm -hmm. prop. I think a good flow performer really understands uh, just being dynamic. Um, so, I mean, it, I would say it's good to have a couple different speeds in your arsenal. If you're going full out the whole time, you know, that can get boring. If you go slow the whole time, that can be boring. The flow performers that I really look up to utilize the whole stage, utilize their whole body, um, utilize the props in really creative ways, you know. Maybe they're not always spinning. Maybe they're actually part of the stage, for example. Just staying dynamic, I think, is the most interesting performer. The good performer is the person who's doing it for the right reasons. And the right reasons is when it comes from the heart. When it's a calling that's bigger than you, that wants to have you in front of people to communicate a message that is grand, that the whole planet can benefit from. Some people have, and I'm not saying I'm one of them because I don't think I am, but I feel like some people really have the ability to connect with the audience and essentially have charisma on stage. I think that's what makes a good performer is that ability to draw people in and engage with an audience while still being yourself. For some reason when I perform I get this big smile. It's not something that I try to do but it's something I can't wipe off my face and I even notice when I look at the other performers they get it too when they see me so I think that really helps them when I look at the audience and connect with them, make eye contact really trying to engage in the audience on a kind of an emotional level so it just depends on what uh, performance we have in store whether it be something dark whether it be something sad something happy we really want to connect and make the audience feel like it hits them on their own personal level I'm trying to always take the audience on a journey, especially with fire theater. When you have a story you're trying to portray, obviously a big difficulty is making sure they understand uh, what's going on stage. But I always like to portray fire as kind of like the illusion of danger. Like obviously it looks really intense and whatnot, but we don't want the audience to be feared for our lives. I like to kind of ride the balance of, you know, mesmerizing and danger and kind of find that middle ground with fire performance in general. One of my favorite things to do when I'm, especially with fire, is coming up to the crowd and putting the fire a little bit closer to them so they can feel the heat from it. And I, I just love seeing people's faces light up when I do that. My favorite part of the performances is when you get the involuntary oohs and ahs from the audience. Um, sometimes they come at times that you that you're not hoping for, you'll do something really, really hard and nobody will notice, and then you'll do something really easy and everybody will cheer. But the point is is sometimes you'll just do something that the audience can't help but go ooh or ah or clap, and those are obviously great times. It's like a drug, it's very addictive. Um, 
you can ask anyone in the troop after a really good show like you're just on a high for hours after you can't go to sleep maybe it's the adrenaline and whatnot and i think i think that's what's so infectious about being on stage and performing especially if it's a piece you built from the ground up and you get to see it manifest on stage um i think that's what we're always kind of chasing and why we're still doing this after 10 years it's such a amazing outlet to be creative with when i'm in the peak of my performance and everything is going right that is that's a feeling that you can't really describe it's it's being in flow like like i was saying and it's kind of like being in a meditation. It's something really magical. Kinshira started in 2008 officially as a group collective and it kind of coincided with when Facebook actually first came out. So upon the height of my excitement seeing fire spinning I got back to town and searched everyone on Facebook who had fire poi as part of their profile and I ended up just emailing 30 strangers. When I saw that message on Facebook I was just like well that's a great idea let's uh, why wouldn't I want to go and hang out with people and it's been fire and enjoy myself. It was, I, I actually traveled from Vernon all the way to Kelowna just to do that. After about a year of jamming, uh, just with the strangers, we kind of formed some tight bonds. And, uh, then it was just, uh, it came down to 10 of us that really wanted to take it seriously and take it to the next level. And 2008 was the first year that happened at the life and arts festival downtown. This was a big deal for us because it was the city of Kelowna that hired us. And I think we actually paid to do our first performance. <laughs> um, because through insur uh, like insurance and everything like that, we actually, I think we paid like a few hundred dollars to yes. perform. So after the Life and Arts Festival, it was definitely that we just have to do it again. If you've wandered into downtown Kelowna at night in the summertime, you've probably seen a group of performers spinning with fire. The group, known as Kinshira, is an Okanagan-based performance troupe which uses a variety of fire toys in a spectacular show of light. We've been performing for about two years now. Our, our first shows were just private parties for friends and our first official kickoff was the Life and Arts Festival in 2008. Kinshira, which means poetry of motion, is derived from the scientific word kinetic, which means movement, and the Hebrew word shira, which means poetry. Taking it from there, we just started to learn new props and worked with new people in the troupe. And I'd say the one of the biggest milestones would have been the first year we got hired for Fright Nights. I believe that was 2011. Fright Nights was at the PNE, so it's in Vancouver. It's a big entertainment park with like rides and games and everything but it's at Halloween time. They have haunted houses, they have scary rides, they have characters that run around look like Freddy Krueger and stuff and jump out and scare people and <laughs> that name still makes Zoe shiver. <laughs> it scared the crap out of her. And that was the first year that uh, 
we got hit with a contract and a schedule that far exceeded anything that we uh, had to do before. So we had to really kick up the bar. I called it fire spinning boot camp, essentially. So we learned how to, at that point, really uh, test our stamina. Three shows a night for three weeks straight is more shows to that point than we did an entire year. We did it in three weeks. <laughs> Fright Nights just kept challenging us. The following year, we got hired back and we brought our first fire theater pieces to that. So 2012 would have been the first year we did fire theater. So storylines, script, all that kind of stuff. I think on a personal level or like family level for Kinshira too, it was like this most the most amazing experience to go away on this road trip all together and live this carny life. You learn to live in like tight space with each other uh, and you just smell like kerosene all the time. <laughs> My goodness, everything smells like kerosene. One time we were gonna do uh, the dark ceremony at Friday nights and Jess is usually the sacrifice. So at the end of that set, uh, she steps up out of the cauldron as this g girl who's been transformed into like a flame goddess. Well, like literally like five minutes before the show, Jess got this massive nosebleed and she couldn't do that piece right now. So we actually got Omar to step in. So Omar was just dressed in like coveralls as a dude. And he's like, we pull him out of the crowd and like he's screaming and we like fake kill him, which is fantastic. That part works great. And then at the end, he like steps up out of the cauldron with this like super feminine headdress and these fans. <laughs> And he's just totally nailing it, but he's a dude in a pair of coveralls, like <laughs> completely not what's supposed to happen. And it was probably the best blooper in the sense that everything actually went according to plan, but it looked absolutely ridiculous because there should never have been a dude in coveralls standing up as a goddess. One of my favorites would have to be uh, during the Rise of the Zombies set at Fright Nights one year, during the finale, I come out dressed as death on stilts, big fire scythe, and I had a stilt malfunction where a stilt basically popped a few bolts and I went down on one knee. So now death being this big, you know, omnipresent destructive force is now crippled on a knee and all these zombies are just swarmed around him wondering what to do and I ended up you know, handing my staff to, to one of the zombies and I think they did some kind of parade. We just had to improvise and Death just played the finale out sitting on his butt. <laughs> I feel that there was a deeper meaning in the dark ceremony. My character, the shaman, who was this facilitator of the darkness and the light, who kind of summoned the spirits and the energies to help with the transformation between death and rebirth. So when we originally did this performance back in Fright Nights, Jess was one of the characters who was the human sacrifice, but then she was transformed into the fire goddess who was resurrected at the end of the show. And when we performed the Dark Ceremony last fall, we just had received notice that she had unfortunately passed a few days before. Um, so when we did the show again, it was like we weren't performing for ourselves, we were actually performing for her. Memory Park was a full production, so it was about an hour-long theater glow performance. 
it was the first time that we had to go out of our comfort zone and introduce acting skills and then performing in a stage where we had to do lighting and then sound. So there was many components that we hadn't really integrated before. Yeah, I remember Bark was the first time I have ever stood on stage and pretended to be anybody other than myself. God, that woman had been chasing her for years. I still can clearly remember this vivid green grass, the toes painted blue like sapphires. So it's definitely pushing a lot of boundaries uh, personally. I thought it was really fun, I enjoyed it. I've always felt like and wanted to push the group towards doing more speaking with our shows because we always have these really great story ideas and I think we're good storytellers, but it's, sometimes it's hard to get across deeper concepts while you're fire spinning. I was the living statue. So for me, that was quite a different role than what I'm accustomed to. I'm kind of a naturally active person. So to sit still for 40 minutes or so was quite challenging for me. But I really enjoyed being the statue because in stillness there's a lot of power. From watching Memory Park, it was an extreme honor to, to be with Kinshira from the beginning and be in the audience and watch this amazing production unfold. We genuinely made people cry. Um, that was kind of our goal because we do lots of Halloween stuff and lots of fun stuff. So we were like, can we make people cry? So when we did that, I thought that was a huge compliment because it meant that we didn't look like idiots trying to put on a play. It was kind of that like, okay, you actually did something that people didn't laugh and walk out at. So to me, that was a big compliment. And we were crying backstage. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I saw it, it was like... <laughs> I was just fake crying. <laughs> Milestone for me also is uh, when I had a vision of having Kinshira in a warehouse to practice and having a recording studio and a place where we can do events. That was like amazing. I remember having that vision one night and going to the troop because we had a meeting that same night. And I say, guys, I need you guys to start envisioning a place that has lots of space, that has a studio and a loft on top so we can practice, have our space, and it's going to cost us only 600 bucks a month. And the very next day, we had the warehouse. The warehouse was just so amazing in so many ways. We quickly converted it into Kinshira headquarters, so it was a place where we could construct, you know, um, staging and practice. But it was a place for us to hold our own events as well. And we held a lot of frequent events there um, and brought in some really amazing talent. Uh, it was a chance for us to perform and put on our own events, but also to highlight other artists. We had live bands, we had DJs, wine and cheese events, morning glory dance parties. Uh, we hosted glow and fire performances, so it was pretty epic. Other big milestones, we just got asked to start doing different things at gigs, so that's kind of where the roving and stilt costumes evolved to, oh, do you, can you, people would just ask if we can have some characters walking around their venue, I'm like, oh, we could get into that. making costumes and and now I'd say the stilt walking and roving entertainment is on par with how many fire shows we do a year. Just as the different demands came knocking at our door we just answered with with our version of that. I definitely do lots of fire shows that's what we all do and I think everybody who's in there gets to play that role. Um, the other roles I bring are probably as a builder. I do make lots of stuff and I'm also the, the, the whip cracker. <laughs> There's definitely a few of us that like to play with power tools. So um, Mark, myself, Will, we all like to build sets. My yard is full of staging and whatnot right now. So I guess I'm a manager, I'm the owner, but really it's a big partnership with, 
with who wants to contribute and, and involve everyone in that process. I think that I have been labeled a little bit as the mama bear of Kinshira. I like to see everybody get along really well and for the most part we get along really well. Some of the unique skills that I can bring to the table is definitely to wrap up the whole event with music and also with a connection, so introduction of the shows. My name is David, I'm a member of Kinshira and I am absolutely delighted to see all of you here today. So when I point at you, you will say the word I just told you. We need some energy here. Let's do it louder. Look at that echo we just got there. Pretty much everyone at some point I think has made one of one or two of their own costumes. I have made so many costumes for Kinshira over the years. I love making costumes. Kinshira gives me an excuse to pretend it's Halloween all year round. I find stuff online that I, that I like and then I copy it. So during the time I've been at Kinshira, I've also invested in a sewing machine and <laughs> some other things like that, so. I've definitely made some very weird props before. I call them Franken props. Um, apparently there's this one device that you use to wring out your paintbrushes and it's a pump action kind of thing and it spins your brush and the paint goes off. Well, I decided to attach a lampshade to it and a bunch of wicks and it's like a spinning pump fire prop. So literally I like to strap Kevlar to anything and see if it'll light on fire and look cool. There's definitely something to be said about knowing your own prop and being able to properly maintain and repair it if you need to. Uh, and uh, it's, it's something I enjoy doing as well because you know, you get to take the raw materials and turn it into something that creates a fantastic fire show in the end. One thing that I do have that doesn't actually exist on the market is um, LED fans that have a strip across that are smart. So they, they can make patterns basically and that's just something you can't buy and Will was actually able to make that for me. The creative process for shows really depends on the type of show. Um, recently we've gotten really involved in what we call fire theater which is merging story with uh, the fire performance and flow arts. If we're doing something that's purely spectacle and we're not concerned with the story, then it's more just planning symmetries with performers and figuring out what looks cool. Fire theater is more, I'm really more into that process lately. We literally have like a meeting and a writing committee and we figure out a story that works with fire arts. Uh, we would want everybody to write notes on their paper or whatever as you go through and then we need somebody to do the tech comments so as we're going through to write notes of this prop needs to be here you can't move around the room yet but just really think about what you're reading and like I, what you would yeah. be doing and take the space between the words even if the punctuation isn't accurate like mm -hmm. embody what you'd be doing in that moment yeah. and see if that helps yeah. She has been talking about wanting to find some other way to survive. I don't think she would seriously leave on principles. This one definitely needs to be revisited. There's some disconnect here with other stuff that's going on, I feel. It's pretty easy to write an interesting story, let's be honest, but why are those characters spinning around fire props? That's the real difficult thing, so it's really a, a meticulous process, but one I really enjoy. Where was all this headed in this crazy new world? This mad world. What a beautiful world to be anything but alone. Epic fantasy. <laughs> the backbone and mind of Kinshira is Tate. So Tate has like a way of leading his ideas and then everyone can add on, usually that's that's how I see it happen most of the time and then it just plugs into the, the skeleton and just becomes a whole being. There's a lot of power in storytelling. When you create a story that really touches people and really changes the way they think, then it's, it's actually more powerful than, than anything else you can really do. If, if you can touch people's hearts and minds, it really can change the future. We're 
start with an idea is never where we finish. And maybe that's the same for all art, but I don't feel like anybody really stresses about that. People are really good at coming with ideas and pitching them and then we might start in one place and by the time the show is actually ready to be performed, we've ended up in this totally different place. Flow and movement is really important based on, like you really need to cater your production based on where the audience is going to be, whether it's like right there in front of you, whether it's a semicircle, what angle, are they above you, are they below you. So there's actually a lot of like design included in, in, in how it all goes together. And uh, it's definitely a group effort. Like we, we spend a lot of time with all of our stage prep and then taking down the stage afterwards. We all have a wide variety of skills, a wide variety of props. Um, we all have amazing ideas. We all work so well together, but it's, it's that connection that we have with each other on stage that, that is so special. And then having the trust and confidence in each other to put on something really amazing. I really think that Kinshira has its own unique style, especially since we've been incorporating the fire and theater components all together. I haven't seen very many other like fire troops or if any that do what we do to the extent that we do it. To me, Kinshira is a conduit for so much of my artistic expression. It's, it's, uh, it's a platform for me to bring costuming, stories, spinning, theatrics, like all this stuff that I'm so in love with creatively, I can put together into a package and throw it on stage. It's an outlet for all of that. It's just such a special experience with a unique group of people that come from all walks of life and it's a great um, opportunity to teach and share with others. Young and old, every creed or religion, they're all, they all have a smile on their face when they see one of these fire spinning shows that we put on. It's so universal and to see more people enjoy life is just gratifying beyond words. Every show, every performance, every theater act, every presence out there will influence someone who will see themselves doing the same thing and it's a, it's a wave of consciousness and a wave of involvement and fire is the best thing to describe it in the end because it keeps going it's passing the torch to somebody else it's empowering someone to believe that they can actually do it i think it would be really cool to try and make these make it closer to a full-time Thing. I know that's kind of a dream for some of us. For the future of Kinshira, I'd love to just uh, keep evolving. I think that's something that there's no going back from. Every year we seem to be doing bigger and more complex things. Doing some kind of theater circuit would be great. I think more people need to see Memory Park and how uh, remarkable that, that piece turned out. I'd love to do some kind of circuit. I think that having a, a clear message that the audience takes home with them is going to be a, a big part of what we do. I would love to see my own children actually, Zan and Aura, become a part of Kinshira when they're older and actually, you know, perform with us. That would be 
so cool to see them introduced into the Kinshira family because they've been surrounded by Kinshira their entire lives. I don't mind a dream. I don't see logistically how it could happen, but I would love to do a full length fire theater piece actually in a theater where yeah. we can utilize curtains and lights, but still get to do fire spinning. That would be a dream. I think Kinshira will keep going even after we're dead. It will keep spreading the love for performing and fire. Keep supporting Kinshira because it's all such amazing people with great spirit. It needs to keep traveling and growing around the world. Thank you.